Hi everyone, my name's Kirk. Welcome to uh, the title of this show is called, this uh, presentation is called Otters Are Easier. This is part two of a trilogy of nature presentations I've come up with. Um, part A, I'm gonna see if this works like this. Um, owls are, Owls are easy, and my, when I first did this, it was owls are easy and otters are easier. But then we, we the royal we, um, the show's just got too big, so now we split into three. Owls are easy, otters are easier, and fishers are king, which part three, I just finished up last year, and I did two presentations of it oh, hey guys, um, on Zoom, and I just want to say how nice it is to see people, because this was my audience last time. When I did the Zoom at my house, there's Coochie Kobe from Bob's Burgers, Jerry Garcia, and an otter. That was... Anyway. Um, so it's nice to see people in person. It's nice to see folks coming on out. The, play, uh, the point of these shows is plain and simple. It's to have people out looking. Somebody said the world's a better place when people take a look at it once in a while and then increase their rate of looking to more than once in a while. I said that. That was my old yeah. quote. Um, Whatever gets you out there is my mantra. Um, you know, could be otters, could be birds, could be whatever. There's always something to be observing out there. There's always something to be looking at. Um, anyway, this is my standard. Oh, and I should say this. The first slide was from St. George, and I'll show you more pictures of Larry um, as we go. This one is from Vinyl Haven. I worked on Vinyl Haven. Um, I still work on Vinyl Haven. I lived out there for 11 years. Um, lots of uh, otter track. But this one is actually my assigned thank you um, uh, slide. Thank you to Rock the Library. Thanks to M for setting this up, reaching out and setting this up and hosting the show. Thanks to the Maine Coast Heritage Trust, here's my official name tag, um, for considering this to be work. Um, my son Leaf was gonna come, but um, he's just getting over, he's actually over it, but we decided he wouldn't um, come today, but here he is helping out with some otter slides, making his own handprints. Um, by, by some otter slides. Um, this program can be broken down into three um, basic themes um, connected through stories. One is gonna be intro to otters and their natural history. Two, tracking trails and signs of otters, focusing on observations in mid-coast Maine. Um, and three, tools and bits of advice, um, stuff that's worked for me, which might be helpful for you going on out and tracking and whatnot. Is that Miles? Yeah, it's Miles. Anyway, when I say tracking, and this one is a male um, otter. This is at Lake Maguntacook. Um, I put up trail cameras, and we'll talk about, ooh, don't go that way, a big cord. We'll talk about trail cameras and setting them up, and this is the easiest tool. This is like the laziest tool. You put it up, you come back later, a month later, look at what you got, you got all kinds of good stuff. Um, anyway, um, this is a big male marking right there. The tail actually is going pretty crazy back and forth. Um, but when you say tracking, any sort of nature observation is tracking. This is a northern perula. It was on Amber's Till. I heard it. I tracked it down. And then I took a picture of it. Um, nice thing with bird watching is um, it's in the moment. It's current. What tracking I'm going to be talking about tonight is more um, historical tracking. It could be lessons from the night before. Otter slides on the ice. Could be scat, sprint, they call it with otters. Um, that uh, <laughs> has been there for a month. Um, there's all kinds of lessons to be learned, but this is gonna be more history. And like you were saying, you saw the slides, you never saw the otters. With otters, um, you just don't expect to see them. When you see them, I, I see them maybe once a year, maybe twice a year, which seems pretty good. Um, it's always exciting. Anyway, a little bit about me, that's me. I'm tracking snow angels in Acadia, very difficult <laughs> um, thing. For the past 14 years, I've worked for the Maine Coast Heritage Trust as the regional steward for Vinyl Haven and North Haven, managed preserves, monitor easements, local committees I represent. What? I also do outreach, school programs, public walks and talks. Haven't for a bit. This is the first public sort of talk in a long time. It's great. Um, up and down the coast, Vinyl Haven, Castine, Frenchboro, Lubeck. Um, I do nature writings as well. And I have my card there on the back of it. I do two. We have the Vinyl Haven Sightings Report, which is a nature blog. Every couple weeks, people send in their pictures and stuff, and I write it all up and I figure it out. Um, the address is on there on the back, as well as um, a column called Nature Bumming, which I used to write for the St. George Dragon. Now it's on the MCHT website. Um, the 13 years preceding um, 
um, MCHT. I worked as a residential environmental ed educator. Did the circuit, fifth and sixth grade camps, 13 different states, Tanglewood and Hog Island are examples of that in Maine. These were three to nine month gigs. You got a season or three in a place. You were basically outside all the time. Sharing the outdoors with kids of all ages is the most rewarding thing I can think of. Isn't that a beautiful picture? This, this was just an early, um, <laughs> in early October. It was on Clark Island. On, you remember we put the camera up? This is one of the pictures from that day. Um, Anyway, uh, from, I put it up for five days, um, and I just got some really good stuff. We'll see some video from that um, later. Uh, my goal with any sort of educational thing is always to do the best outing presentation I can. Um, I was told early in my naturalist career that um, it was all right to say I don't know, which is really good. I wish more naturalists knew that phrase instead of making stuff up. But... Um, I don't like to say I don't know more than three times to the same question. So I got really disciplined with field guides. I looked up a lot of stuff. Um, so um, that, that's the best way I've, I've found that I learned. Maybe it works for you too. Um, anyway, so to begin with, we're talking about North American river otters. We are not talking about sea otters. That's a sea otter. I lived in Homer, Alaska for a little bit. That's, <laughs> that's in the ocean. They are totally aquatic, totally different species. Even if you see a river otter, in the ocean, it doesn't make it a sea otter. People on violent, that's a sea otter. It's like, no, it's, it's a lake otter, it's a creek otter. No, it's North American river otter. Um, they are closely related. Like I said, these guys don't leave the water. Um, this one, using tools, it's a sign of whatever, higher intelligence. Only, only an animal that uses tool would say that that's a sign of intelligence of another animal. Um, but this, you can tell, this is a female that has mated recently. Does anybody know how you can tell? I'll give you a clip. Huh. Otter mating is not pleasant. Or well, I've never participated. I don't know. It <laughs> seems pretty like rough. I've seen it once. Not pleasant. The male will end up ripping off the skin of the female's oh. nose yeah. as they're going, and that's how you can tell. Oh. Mm. Oh. Mm. Uh -oh. Yeah. Anyway, um, let's see. But uh, this is another one from Clark Island. Uh, what's my deal with otters? When I first got to Maine in 04, um, I had no experience tracking river otters. I'd seen them over the years. Highlights, my first time I saw one in uh, 1992, Klamath Lake in Oregon. My memory may have changed over the years, but I swear they jumped in the water and swam under our canoe. I don't know if that really happened or not, but they swam by it. It was really cool. Second time, I ever, uh, second memory, 1997, on Cape Cod, leading a hike with kids at the Cranberry Bog, at Pamet Road, right by the Truro Coast Guard Station. Um, we heard this I'm gonna say it, this god awful sound coming from the pond there. We looked, there was river, uh, otters mating. We set scopes on it, all the kids got to see it. It's the female basically barely getting her head above the water, going, ah! And being dunked underneath <laughs> over and over again. Books say, poor thing, books say 45 minutes, it can last. This went on for five hours. Ooh. We took the kids back, we went back and checked it out, we went and had lunch, we came back, and it was just. So that was a highlight, I mean, maybe not for her, but, um, and then on my first anniversary, wedding anniversary, my wife and I, um, we saw a group of eight in Sacramento, which was really cool. Um, but the summer before I moved here, I was up in Homer, Alaska, like I said, and that's where I really got to watch otters um, close. This was a pond right where I lived and got to know there was three otters and they had their den over here and they would swim across and they'd get on this one marking area where they would roll and mat down all the grasses and everything like that. Um, and it was cool, and it was great, and I got to see them, and you could tell when they're at the dock overnight, because there'd be all these fish heads on the dock. They would eat the fish, but you know, leave the brains for us, it was really <laughs> thoughtful. Um, but then moving to Vinyl Haven, it just went crazy, mostly because it's snow. This is the first belly slides I ever saw. This was my first winter on Vinyl Haven, Lanes Island. Um, and it was just, it was crazy. I found over 20 dens out there, dozens of latrines. I've been growled at by otters twice. <laughs> Good stuff. Anyway, so at this point, we're going to delve into a little bit more natural history. And let's see. Um, and while I do that, this is a video that I took at the ball ground. It's shaky. I'm doing a What's it called? Sc uh, digiscoping. So I have a spotting scope. I'm holding my camera up to the scope. This is at the ball ground in Vinyl Haven where everybody goes skating. 
Um, I drove by and I saw this otter and it was coming out of this hole and it was taking three or four fish at a time, throwing them on the ice, eating them and going back in. I set my scope up and I was like, this is fantastic. I've got six minutes of video. It's gonna be fantastic. It never went back in the water. It took up all the time of my video. Huh. Everybody drove by me, nobody cared whatsoever. But anyway, while we watch this, River Otters, some stats, some basic stuff. Uh, King Philip comes over for Guinness Stout. Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, g uh, genus, species. Kingdom is animal, phylum, chordata, it's got a backbone or, or a spinal cord. Um, class, mammalia, um, order, carnivora. Family, Mustelidae, they are weasels. They're closely related to mink, ermine, all those good guys. Yeah, this guy's pretty funny. He starts rolling around. Um, Subfamily, Lutrinae are the otters. Mustelid-like creatures um, started showing up about 40 million years ago, um, the fossil record, from a dog ancestor, like all of our favorite animals, you know, seals and everything. Um, about 1.9 million years ago, modern-day river otters, um, something resembling them started showing up. Lantra canadensis, North American river otter, size, males can have a body 31 inches, um, a tail 20 inches, so 51 inches, wow. tip of the tail, tip of, or tip of the, whatever, whole body, 24 pounds, tip of the nose to the tip of the tail. Females can have body, will have bodies up to 26 inches, tails 12, so 38 inches, so over a foot shorter, or smaller, excuse me, and then 18 pounds. Um, they can get up to. Lifespan, 21 years in captivity, eight to nine is average in the wild, um, up to 13 potentially in the wild, life is just easier in captivity. Um, description, large, sleek, short-legged, tail, very thick at base, tapering to the tip, underparts, rich brown, belly, silvery. And I'm sorry that this is shaking, but, but <laughs> this was back 2009, I think. Um, behavior, movement, um, Male, uh, males can cover about 22 miles of shoreline, females about nine miles of shoreline, not in the night, but that's um, what their territories will be. Um, it all depends on the amount of food in the area. Most activity is concentrated on one or two high prey density areas within their home ranges. They can swim up to seven and a half miles an hour, um, dive 65 feet and spend four minutes on one breath underwater. It comes back. This is when a guy was talking to me. I had to tell him, stop bothering me. Um, Anyway, uh, their diet, largely fish, frogs, crayfish, and shellfish. I don't know about it, if anybody else heard about it. There's one that made it up to Eastern Egg Rock last year. Yeah. And apparently was eating puffins. I wrote oh, to all of them. Puffins? And then nobody would care if it was cormorants, but puffins, yeah, everybody gets all oh, upset. Yeah. I don't know, you would get upset. Um, but uh, I wrote to Audubon to see if they had any pictures of, like, I don't know, scat with puffin heads in it or anything like that. They didn't. Um, anyway, they're adapted to a semi-aquatic lifestyle, and um, semi-aquatic is the big part. is a big part of why we love them. Streamlined, small ears, short, powerful legs, webbed toes. They have that nictitating membrane, that clear eyelid, um, so they can see underwater. Smell and hearing are very acute. Um, they have a smaller right lung, reduced lobulation at aids in diving mammals. I have nothing to back that up with. I just read that somewhere. Um, so if you find lungs, and if one is smaller. Could be an otters. Um, short trachea, in between terrestrial and marine mammals, a shorter trachea may improve air exchange and increase lung ventilation in diving mammals. A lot going on with this guy. Life cycle, they give birth in the wintertime, one to six, two to three is average. Um, they don't, they're helpless. They open their eyes after 30 days. They don't eat solid food till 63 days. They're weaned after 12 weeks. Adults will provide food for about nine months and adults, meaning the mom, Dad doesn't take part in it. And they can stay with their mother for over a year. When they disperse, females will go set 30, up to 37 miles and males will go up to 19 miles. Hmm. Right after they give birth though, females go into estrus, which for a week or two is the only time that they're available for mating. Um, they mate right away, so this is in winter time. Their gestation period is 60 plus days, or 60 days or so, two months. So, but they don't give birth until a year later. So they have delayed implantation like bears, um, they, the egg is fertilized, it just is not implanted, and it floats around for 10 months. Range, historical range was the entire um, North America, now um, California up through Alaska, across Canada, a little bit in the Rockies, Wisconsin, upstate New York, all of New England, Jersey, south along the coast, all the way to Texas, absent from the Midwest and the Southeast. 15 different states, though, are reporting that their populations 
our grow. That is river otter in a nutshell. And that's one drinking water. I think that's pretty cute. But this one, I ran out of video. I couldn't believe it. So first, so we're going to get into tracking now, and I just want to say, we are so lucky to have snow. We are so lucky to live where we live. Not everybody agrees with me about snow and how lucky we are to have snow. You're wrong, I'm right. This is fantastic. <laughs> this is, no, um, because where I, where I live in California, there's a lot of trackers, and there's no snow, and like you'd get like a mud puddle, and everybody would like hover around it for like an hour or more looking at tracks. This is fun. You can follow tracks forever. The snow will hold it for days, um, even though I do recommend folks get out as early as possible. But um, it's pretty cool. So what makes otters easier? Um, easier than owls? Um, owls are easy because they make noise, they leave scat, and they leave pellets. That said, you don't find that much of that. Not necessarily unless you work at it or unless you're lucky and you hear them. Otter sign, I can go to any water, body of water around here and we can find several latrines, we can find all kinds of stuff. They're creatures of habit and it's out in the open um, often. This is in Old Harbor Pond um, and this is actually in a nutshell, this is why I love them so much. They're semi-aquatic, they, most of the time they're in the water. When they come out to land, it's often just a quick little thing. This is where an otter came out of this hole, went up to this old dock spent the day sleeping and then came back out. So you go up to it and you're like, this is awesome. Like you've learned so much. You can see where the otter came out, see where it slept, went back in. When you track coyotes or like bobcat or fishers, any terrestrial animal, those guys will go. And they will go and go and go. And they often take you to something cool. But sometimes it takes a long time. These are just like short, sweet, and <laughs> um, Tracking basics. Lots of people like to count toes, and that is a good place to start if you're not too familiar with tracks. This is kind of a wind-blown otter track. One, two, three, four, five. Otters have five toes. Coyotes, wild dogs have four toes. And they have the claws, you know, um, kind of a narrow, this is a coyote um, print from the marsh where I live in, in St. George. Um, kind of tight claw marks. Um, this is a bobcat from the same area. Um, they have retractable claws, so um, they don't show up in their um, prints, but four toes once again, and yeah, for the coyote four toes. But counting toes sometimes doesn't work out, because this bobcat apparently has six toes. Um, but this is just that pad, and somehow the ice melted weird or froze weird. Um, but in light snow, um, I, I do, you do find uh, otter tracks that are, can be pretty well picked out, and that's what these are right here. Don't see them that often. Um, this is my token otter tracks with snow fleas. I love snow fleas. They're so fun. Um, you know, those little guys bouncing around on the snow in the wintertime. We love them. Springtails. Um, this is where an otter had been running, and this is right by Old Harbor Pond as well, had running, came up to this root off this big tree, and must have just propelled itself up, and you can almost see it, like, jumping at you, like, you can almost see it. But counting toes with them can be tough, too. I see four on this, and this is an otter track. How about this one? It's like 15. I'm not good at counting, but there's way too many tracks. Um, so what we look for, and sometimes they, they're, these otters are muddy. They're coming out of the water, out of muddy spots. Sometimes it's hard to pick up any definition whatsoever. I don't need to count toes on this to know it's an otter. Look at the size of this tail. That's the tail imprint. These are two feet sticking this way. Um, but the tricky thing is, another tricky thing, fishers, which are around in big numbers, also have five toes. And I've got to tell you, I probably could not tell the difference between an otter and a fisher track next to each other. Just the track. You follow the trail, though, and they behave totally differently. Fishers don't like to go in the water. When I first moved to St. George from Vinyl Haven, there's no fishers out on Vinyl Haven, I was tracking this, I thought it was an otter, and I was like, what is it doing? We're just wandering around the woods, and it was like, then all of a sudden it started going up logs, and I realized it was a fisher instead. Um, uh, but back to basics once again, um, if you're just looking at the trail pattern, the trail's where a lot of the information is going to be. This is direct register, this is a bobcat. Bobcats, coyotes, direct register is when their back foot 
goes right exactly where their front foot was. It's the most efficient way of walking. Often ends up with a straight line. And you can see the um, most efficient way of walking through snow or through grass or whatnot. Um, otters don't do that. Otters, otters do not direct register. They'll do a 3-4 lope, and that's what this is in light snow. And fishers do the same thing. Um, this is a bounded, these are four different otters. This is Old Harbor Pond once again out on Vinyl Haven. Four different otters bounding across in deeper snow. Um, and then, of course, it's the belly slides. And that's what they're famous for. Fishers do not belly slide. One time I found a mink um, slide that was probably five feet long. Other than that, um, they're not going to slide. This is me standing over a belly slide on the ice, taking a picture, um, <laughs> taking a picture of it. And belly slides are great. Um, you were saying you saw them. They look like they were having fun zipping mm -hmm. around. Um, anyway, let's go. Cool. This is the only picture I have of an otter doing a belly slide. Mm -hmm. This is a, a latrine tiptoe mountain. And this one is just, this is on a trail camera, so it got clicked. And you can see how low they are. Um, it's not very good, but if you can see, it's, it's um, pretty low. Now, I mentioned that otters are sweet. We like them because they just hop out of the water. It's often very short distances, very quick tracking. But they also have to go from body of water to body of water. So, like on Vinyl Haven, they have a trail, they, or they have runs, they call them. They have a trail that goes from Vinyl Cove to the basin. It's a mile and a half over land. And when they do that, if there's snow, they'll belly slide. I found a trail just like that in St. George. It starts, uh, well, I guess it started either end. St. George River to the Ponderosa, if you're familiar with that pond on Walston Road, into the marsh, and then to CB Cove, across 131 at the CB Cove, across the whole peninsula. This otter had come from the Ponderosa, and from the Ponderosa, it's all downhill to the marsh. This was a 2,000 foot long belly slide. This otter did not pick up and walk. It just kept pushing and pushing and just sliding on down. It was awesome. I was pretty happy that day. It could be downhill, it could be flat ice. Um, this looks like it was a little slushy, a little easy to go. I don't know what happened here, a little hip shot um, as they're going. Um, and one thing I am working on, I'm working on a book. I'm gonna, it's going to be an alphabet book. It's only going to have otter slides and otter scat. There's an X, there's a K, there's a Y. This could be a J, it also could be an anchor, I think. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Um, but here's a good example. So here's this, uh, this is a tiptoe mountain again out in Vinyl Haven. This is an otter belly sliding. This is a mink bounding. Like I said, I've never seen mink, I've only one time I've seen a mink slide. Mink, if the snow is deep enough, will get into the snow and tunnel and burrow and go, um, actually will hunt under there. Otters don't do that, they will get into openings in the snow to get to their den or through the ice, but they don't make tunnels or anything like that. Um, and their tracks, their slides are actually kind of useful. Well, it, to more than them. These are old otter slides, and this is a coyote that used that, pounded down, matted down, um, snowed. It was an easier way to walk through. This is one of my favorite, the 2,000 foot long um, otter slide in St. George. Um, I was tracking a fisher a couple days later, and I knew where the fisher den was, I knew where it was going, but it made it, it was perpendicular to this belly slide. It was having a hard time in the deep snow. Fishers are not very graceful. And um, it made it to this, and it just turned and went the wrong way, but it was like, it's so much easier following this otter slide. And then it eventually went to its den. Kind of a cool thing, tracks over time. This was not done in the ice. This was done on snow. This is an otter, this is an otter pond on Vile Avon, sliding across. Um, when you make a track, you melt the snow and then it refreezes. So sometimes then you get a lot of wind and you get these like elevated tracks in the, in the, in the it looks weird. This, I believe the snow then melted. So this would all be snow, but this was still ice in it. So it made a pretty cool pattern uh, across the ice. Um, where are the trails taking you most of the time? Um, but when you're following the trails, you're going somewhere, they're gonna take you to bodies of water. This is Sand Cove. Um, this is the way from Old Harbor Pond that the otters would go. Um, if it's not too deep, they will bound or whatnot, but if it's too deep, these guys actually got in a single file line and kind of just made this, you know, catacomb through, uh, cut through the uh, snow. Um, and this is the only picture I have of an otter running on its trail. The way these cameras work, they get um, triggered, takes one picture, a second later, takes another picture, a second later, takes another picture, this is my old camera. 
And I put it up, this is on that 1.5 mile trail um, between the basin and Vinyl Cove. And I got this one picture and the next two, there was nothing. This is an otter going full speed. First off, I learned I should have clipped this thing. It would have been a nice picture right here. Um, but this guy is going full speed. This is when otters are their most vulnerable, when they're going across land and they just boogie and they are going fast. I was pretty glad about that. But this, back to uh, the, the camera with the uh, onion ivy back there. Um, I put the camera at the beginning, <laughs> at the beginning of one of these trails. And this, here's the water down here. And they came on out. There's three of them. Oh my gosh, you're big. Whoa. All right, let's do that again. Those crowd pleaser, huh? Um, now what they're doing, they're sniffing. I do believe when the camera gets triggered, it makes a sound. I don't think they can see the light, but these guys, well, maybe not see the light. Um, they seem to be, what's going on, trying to sniff over there. I don't think we got the sound going. Let's see. This next one, I can't hardly, oh, I can't hear it. The otter chicken down, he jumped back, it was a big splash. Um, so now I found, I'm pretty excited about this because now I found a couple spots where those long trails between bodies of water, get them at the beginning, they might be, they might show up for a little bit more than just a quick run. Um, where these are gonna take you, they're gonna take you to slides right here. This is an awesome slide below Tiptoe Mountain. Otter Den is over here, it comes down here and it just slides right in and I'm standing there. This is the same day I took this. I figured it was like a winter time, wait till the snow or maybe wait till it rains and it's like smooth. Now, an otter came running out, like right into the water, it was really, Looked uh, painful, but um, sometimes the otter trails will take you to holes in the ice. This is in the marsh behind my house um, in uh, St. George. This took me this hole. There's a pickerel jaw. Otters had a feast there. Um, sometimes it's hole. The, the, they're fine under the ice. The way ice works, you know, it kind of like the water levels change, so there's uh, there's air underneath there. They can stay under the ice for forever, it seems. Um, but they will, they do have to get under the ice. So they have to find these weak spots and they always mark with <laughs> scat around the edge. But if you start following otters around, you're gonna know where all the openings are in the ice um, because they know. In fact, this, I love this one. This one, they came out and then they went right over and the den is right over there, but they couldn't make it under the ice over there. So they went, I just love it. So they're gonna take the holes in the ice. This is where one came out. This is on Old Harbor Pond again. Came out of the hole, went over here, went to the bathroom, went right back under. Short, simple, sweet. Thank you, Otter. <laughs> this is at the Meadowbrook Preserve in St. George. And this is a big tidal brook, they call it. It's more like a big river or creek almost. And I followed the whole ice thing up. You can see the ice had come down, then got put back up. I followed the whole thing. And not until I came to, it was probably like a half mile, eh, maybe a quarter mile. Um, all of a sudden there was these otter prints. They'd been under these pieces of ice swimming their way up. And uh, it was pretty cute. I really like that footprint right there. Um, but what were they going to? They were going to a latrine. And if you start tracking otters, that's what you're gonna find, that you're gonna find latrines. These otters left here, there's two of them. They went, they went to the bathroom, they went back in here, they spent the night in the den, came back the next day, went to the bathroom, went out. These latrines, these marking areas are super important. Um, for uh, otters. This is where any otter that's gonna go, it's gonna show up, pass through, it's gonna go looking for these latrines. They're gonna find out who's in the area. They're gonna maybe find out gender. I don't even know, who knows what information they pick up from these latrines, but it's the place where all the otters go to. And so they're very disciplined. They'll come out of the water and just find these spots. This one, this is a tiptoe. The water's way down here. I don't know what was up here. The otter went several times to that spot. This is a trail that um, leads from a den to this wonderful um, latrine up. This is all moss. Everything around here is green, except for right here. And it's all got scat, it's all torn up. Um, this otter's marking this. She actually was pregnant female um, at her den next door. That's the one I saw slide on her belly, which I uh, felt good. Um, anyway, it's cool. Uh, this is 6 p.m., so nocturnal. Um, latrines, um, anyway, the latrines can be big. They can have, oh, I've seen them 15 feet across, maybe um, 15 feet like radius. Um, they're often look like green patches, like in the middle of like everything else is brown and everything else has got leaves over it. This is a run, lots of scat. 
Um, latrines are fun to find. This is on Clark Island, on the other side of Clark Island. Um, <laughs> and this is just where the otters go and they mark. There was a den nearby, often it's near dens. They'll pick the highest points in um, a latrine to mark on. I guess it's so the air can carry it, the scent or whatever. Sometimes if there's no high spots, they'll actually make little mounds out of leaves. My pictures of those always look awful though because it just looks like everything else. But you'll find these little mounds. It's kind of like Richard Dreyfus and you know, Close Encounters. This means something. And then they'll go to the bathroom right on top of it. Um, they love rocks in the water. Oh my gosh, this is in the marsh um, at St. George. And this thing, not only is it a goose book, it's got lots of otter scat on its spring. Well, they're clearly not using a restroom in their water, though. I mean... I don't think they do at all. Right. Yeah. So, they, so, so right. So they're, they're water protecting type. where they live. How close are their dens to their latrines? Are they, is there a significant distance... Wait, what you said that they're protecting their? It's like, it, you know. Well, they're, they're going to the bathroom right next to where they live, so like right, any but rain it's up and... on the rock. It's not in the in the water. Like I find it interesting that they're an aquatic animal who is not using. They're getting out. They're getting out to, to go to the bathroom away from where they live. And especially, I mean, they have high metabolism. These otters are eating and eating. I mean, the amount of sprint you can find around any body of water is pretty impressive. Um, I think they're going out not necessarily because they wouldn't want to go in the water other than it probably would feel bad. Um, it's more for the marking. They, okay. they're, it's, they're using, kind of like coyotes, like they use their scat and their, their spray for whatever. They're using it for that. Um, how close to the dens? They can be very close. Okay. They can be right on top of the den. Oh. Letting, folks, letting all the other animals know that they use it. Apparently, when it's a pregnant female, even though that female um, definitely, the ones that are near dens where a female has young tend not to have as much scat. I don't know, they probably have musk or whatever from glands all over it, but you just don't see as much because they don't want to draw attention to the young. I mean, sometimes it's just the biggest rock around. This rock was sticking out, and you can see these otters have gone to town, sticking out in the snow. This is yesterday, this is in the basin, this is Lobster Cove, and this is where the first time I ever found a latrine was right here. First day, of, second day of work, I went out there with my boss, I'd never been to this spot before, you know where we're talking, there's O'Neill's is up here, north end of the basin, and we got out there, this guy Jeff Romano wanted to see if he got cell phone coverage, and he was just standing in all this otter poop, and it was just amazing, it was just like, so that's 2007, and I went out there yesterday, and sure enough, it's still active. Huh. And so that's 15 years ago. Otters live eight or nine years. So this is potentially the third Jeez. generation using this. And they're creatures of habit. They'll use the same dens. They'll have tons of dens. But they'll use these same latrines over and over. So even though it is the next generation, whatever otters are going to show up, this is a part of land that juts out into the water. It also happens to be the skinny dipping spot. I showed up one day with a camera. That was weird. <laughs> um, but... Um, it's a part of the land. If you look at any map on it, or if you look at any the, out the shoreline of a pond or whatnot, anything that sticks out, that's the first places I would go to look for otter sign, huh. um, because that's where the otters are going to go, I guess. This is Mill Farm, and this is interesting because you can see it's a cattail marsh, but something's going on here. There's no cattails. The otters have totally mowed it down. They've totally matted it all down and used that as latrine. Um, right by, I don't think they have a den there, but they certainly spend enough time there. This is on Bald Island in the Whites. This is just two weeks ago. This is in a quarry. There's no wind that whips through. All this is from otters. Um, and that's one of my favorite places, Bald Island. Yeah. It's that quarry full of otters. Yeah. Otter spray comes out tubular. Looks like this pretty quickly, though. Ah, uh, awesome. They're treasures, you know. Uh, fish scales. There's a backbone. Um, oh, wow. they, they, they can collect in pretty big numbers at these spots. I'd say a significant one, um, uh, significant latrine could have like 200 scats there. Yeah. And then just spreads on out and they can be there for weeks and weeks and weeks. I used to love snow, love snow. Now I'm at the point where snow covers up a lot of the story that you could have seen before. This one was a lobster that it had eaten. And for some reason, the lobster, when they scat the lobster out, it. Um, it kind of bleeds into the um, ice, mm. the red. I, th I thought this was a rock gunnel. It could just be a regular American eel. 
um, all the way through the digestive system. How about this? An entire green crab exoskeleton passed through wow. the arm. That could not have felt good. Huh. Uh -huh. This guy, this I think is a saxophone player. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, this is the letter A, letter B. I got D the other day. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, this is, so we've looked a little bit at fish. This is, I believe, I never saw this on vinyl, even though they could eat frogs out there. In the marsh, I think they eat a lot of frogs, and they're scat, a little gross. Um, but the thing here is, last year, all of a sudden, there are these worms showing up. This is exciting news from last year. There was all these, you know, intestinal worms. And I was trying to figure out if it was one otter, like, trying to identify the otters by their scat. That's the next thing. Well, who's their natural predator? Who's their predator? Fishers. Uh, no, I'd probably put my money on otter. I don't, th I don't think they would mess with each other. Um, yeah, they're pretty, I mean, I don't know if they have any big, pre I mean, when they're running, I'm sure coyotes could get them or bobcat. Right, what but, keeps them in check? from um, over overpopulation. I think food. I mean, because there's okay. tons on Vinyl Haven, and there's tons of food. It seems very connected. Okay. Granted, on Vinyl Haven, you've got great horned owls, river otters, and mink. That is the predators. You know, Vinyl Haven, where weasels rule. Um, anyway, this I like. This is another eel backbone with a frozen parasitic or oh. intestinal worm, and then these nice fish scales down here. And I, oh, that's one of the tools of the trade. Um, for folks who have these foam things, and you have a camera on it, 30 bucks on Amazon, it's this little clip. You can put it on your phone and all of a sudden you can get really close to everything. It's a macro lens, really yeah. cool. And you can get wonderful pictures of intestinal worms oh, or just frost forming on um, otter scat. Probably the nicest looking otter scat in this whole slideshow. I like the back bones. Well, this was interesting though, because this was at um, Meadowbrook and I'd never seen this before. This one otter, and this is once again, I'm trying to identify otters through their scat, didn't fit, ate all these baby eels, or little eels, but didn't finish. There's still meat on them. And these are those, those are the snow fleas, the springtails. And I actually got my video, this is so much fun. Watch, I mean, these guys don't, springtails, have you ever watched springtails? Have you ever watched snow fleas? They have no control over where they're going. They're just like all over the place. But this one, watch right here. This guy is super psyched, bam! He just shows up, he's like, food! Um, I've never seen the um, with meat still on him, and this one particular otter at Meadowbrook does that. Here, he's going to show up again. Where is Meadowbrook? Meadowbrook, it's on Turkey Cove Road. Well, um, it's a new one when you're leaving from the dump, you go down the hill. Right as you're going up the hill on the left, there's a parking lot. You cross that little creek. What's the name? Otis Road? Is that a road over there? Mm -hmm. Otis Point Road? No. Otis yeah. Point? Never seen that road. Um, on the left, though, there's a parking lot. You'll see a kiosk. I think the town runs it. Um, yeah, it's so the last couple of years that it's been there. It's nice. nice. Um, if you can hang out at latrines, you're also going to find this stuff. I have yet to see, find any conclusion as to what this white goo is. Only in that book, the, behave, the Peterson one, it confirmed that it is not from the anus, it's from the intestines. So there's this white goo that you find every now and then. Sometimes it looks pearly and kind of nice. Um, and then it gets cold and it dries up. And then, I like this, this is kind of fish scales and the white intestinal goo. Is there, have, you, have you ever seen the result of like a large latrine that's used over and over? Does their volume of scat ever become detrimental to the area where they're It'll kill plants okay. that are there. Yeah. I wouldn't say detrimental. I mean, it's not, there's not like the... Right, in some spots, does it work as fertilizer, or is it, when it, there's a large volume of it, it does it then go well, from the, fertilizer the, to toxic? Yes, actually, they, they do talk about how it acts as a fertilizer, probably in some of the smaller ones, but when they focus on like one like little hill, like it definitely kills those particular plants. But I've never read anything about it spray, like spraying into the water or anything like that. Anyway, so what goes on at latrines? Lots of sniffing. This is at Vinyl Haven. This was cool. This is at Old Harbor Pond. The road is right up here, and I just moved to Reach Road, and I rode my bike, and I looked down, and I said, man, if I was an otter, that's where I would 
um, have my latrine. And that's always a good way of thinking, like when you're <laughs> tracking or getting into animals. Like if I was an owl, I would pick that tree. And I went down there and sure enough, it was an awesome latrine. So I put up the camera, here's Otter sniffing, rolling around, there's an otter on his back. We've already covered what's there. So this is disgusting. And this guy's rolling all over in it. And it pops up, looks yeah. around, lots of pooping. I was told by a guy who does trail camera stuff that I may have more otter poop, pooping pictures than anybody else. Um, pooping and rolling, look at that, scat and rolling, tails up, um, more pooping. This is interesting though, this is the one at McGuntacook. This guy's marking, but his tail isn't up. So it's not scat, I'm not sure what they might spray on up really? as well. Um, but the main thing is that they all go there. And sure enough, this is what I call the gang of four that lived at, uh, that I tracked for five years. Um, wow, this looks almost like a big rope or something. Um, anyway, sometimes the, whole, the, sometimes the trails also will take you to other holes. Like I said, they don't burrow or tunnel in the snow, but they do have to get to dens. And that is so much fun to find dens. Like I said, 20, I found 20, this is a couple weeks ago on Bald once again. You can see this path kind of tough to tell with the um, uh, shadows, but this path goes right to these trees and that's right where the den is, um, where these otters live out there. This was, I showed you that picture of the female on the latrine. This is the trail from there, goes right under this, this uh, there's a tree that fell over. Right in the roots over there, that's where her den was. Um, Meadow Brook, once again, I followed where those otters had gone under the ice. Followed it up to this beaver pond. This is an old beaver lodge. They took over an old beaver lodge. That's where they spent the night. Could be just roots. Um, just a little bit opening in the roots. Any place basically is up for grabs. What does uh, Stokes say? Um, uh, Donald Stokes wrote in his book, there are way more dens than otters. Each otter or otter group will have multiple dens literally all over the place. In root systems, this one, this one uh, kind of looks like the hobbit leaf called it the otter. Uh, Bilbo Otter, my kid, <laughs> like that. Anyway, this is a tiptoe mountain, and you can just see there's where the water is, just a little bit under there, a uh, little tunnel in there. This is between, this is above, well, this is actually above Max Pond um, on Vinyl Haven. This is one of my favorites. I've done a vernal pool search for the Vinyl Haven Land Trust on their property over here. This is MCHT property over here. And I hopped over this little creek, and I got up here, and I was just about to eat a granola bar, and I looked down, and it was just scat everywhere middle of the woods middle of the woods scat everywhere um and this one's got like five or six different entryways this is where the gang of four have been hanging out um sometimes it's a rock wall this is a pier down at old harbor pond and the trail to come right off that pond right under there into there um you can see this has been a few days of them going between the openings of their den <laughs> oh and they always leave a lot of you can tell Kind of like the dog park, you know, in the middle of winter time. There's a lot of scat to build up. Um, this is a Carver's Pond, a big rock mound, and they'll use that too, any kind of shrapnel. This is all scat leading into an opening, and they don't, uh, into the inner roots of this rock pile. They don't care about going over rusty metal. They're going to go in there. That's where the gang of four hung out there. Um, one other thing which you might find, this is Larry again, though. Um, Larry is from the marsh behind my house. Um, and Larry had, there's there three otters that lived there from the last time I knew about it. Mo and Curly, you didn't see that often. They seem smaller. I mean, look at the little head sticking out. Um, pretty cute. Larry always seemed bigger, so I thought Larry was male. Um, and I would walk to school to get leaf across the ice, and this is 2.30 in the afternoon, and Larry, the one winter, Larry would be there fishing and hanging out and it was awesome, and we get to see it on a regular basis. And then one day we had one of those snows that, um, uh, snows are great for tracking if they end like at midnight, because then the animals have time to go out and step and make all their prints all over the place. This was a snow that, like let's say sun came up at six, probably nine o'clock it stopped. So whatever tracks were out there were covered. And I went down to the marsh, and you can see there's like that slush, but there was this line right here. And once again, you think, if I was an otter swimming through slush, that's what I would, it would look like. And look, it went right over to here, this area, very disturbed. So I went over to it and I was like, oh, look, it's got an orange tint to it. And then I reached through and I was like, oh, it's blood. 
and there's blood all over the place. And this is the recipe for Estrus. She was in heat. She came to my property and marked it um, so any male in the area would know. So Larry's female. Um, and that's Leaf hanging out. <laughs> I've never seen it. Actually, on Lane's on, there's I saw mink estrus once. Um, but that was pretty cool. That's me on the right. Um, this is the view from on Old Harbor Pond. Um, this is where the road would be. And this was the day I looked out, and this is where that latrine is, where I got all those pictures of them rolling and everything like that. And I said to myself, someday I'm going to get see from my car, I'm going to see an otter trail from my car. I've never seen that before. I looked out, and I was like, oh, look at that deer trail. It wasn't a deer trail. That same day, it was the otters. And they, um, they go from their den. They walk up this frozen creek. Oh, how cute. That must be that. Um, this is where they have access to the water. Now, for four, three years, there was only four of them. And then one year, you can see there's the fort. And then there was this fifth guy that showed up. And that was pretty fun, because this fifth guy always seemed to kind of be on the outskirts, a little bit off to the side. Um, look, even the belly slides. Here's these four. Like, eh, I'm over here, and it was kind of like, oh, I hope they're not mean to him or whatever. Now I think he wasn't that interested in being on these guys. Uh, here's four over here. Here's this guy on the side. They get to a narrow part. They all go together. What happens when you get through? The guy goes over here again. And it was just interesting, this dynamic. And I was wondering if they all hung out, and then I got this picture. Five sets of eyes. So they did all hang out. But eventually, this is when this group kind of broke down. And these groups, these are males. These are young males um, that don't have territories that group up. You're not going to find females mixed in. It's just the way it works. Or, or groups of females either. Um, I think the new guy, which I'm going to guess is that guy, I think kicked the other ones out because I went back to that den where they would all hang out. And I was standing on it. And they growled at me. And I stood on this den. I mean, probably was stupid of me to do it. But probably like 50 times with otters underneath it. And those four didn't care. The new guy did not like it. And he let me know. And those are, I've only ran twice in like the last 10 years, and that was one of them. Allie McCarthy, do you know Allie McCarthy? John McCarthy's wife. She sent me this picture. And I'm going to tell you, does anybody here know Allie McCarthy? Oh, by the way. I've never, I'd never seen her smile, never heard her talk, never anything. I mean, she seemed like a nice person. She wasn't mean or anything like that. She just never, just didn't, yeah, you know that. She sent me this picture, and she said, because she lives on Carver's Pond. She had a little kid at the time, and she said every morning when she was changing diapers or whatever, she would see these otters, and she saw them for weeks and weeks and weeks, and now she was sad because she hadn't seen them in two weeks. And I was like, are you so spoiled? Like, you haven't seen them in two weeks? But they were creatures of habit, and they liked marking right outside her house, which is pretty cool. And so we bonded, Allie and I. And once again, I never heard her talk or anything like that. I saw her at the Halloween parade, and she gave me one of these. <laughs> I was like, yeah, totally in with Alan McCarthy. Yeah. Um, this is what I'm excited though for the for the next winter. I'm gonna find that den where these guys are. The latrine was over there. We went to that latrine, I think, that day. Just loaded. That was a huge latrine. Um, so probably in that quarry where they came out of. Um, wow. Oh, and then here's my advice. Kind of final stretch. Um, tools. Number one tool for good tracking is attitude. <laughs> Ferry rides. You know. Ferry rides in the wintertime, no, right now is the best time to get on the ferry. If you want to look at wildlife, birds, the, the, the winter ducks are just showing up, old um, tails or whatever. Yeah. Or old, you know. Is this Divinal Haven? This is Divinal Haven. I mean, but when you see that kind of sea smoke, it's cold. It's cold. Um, but I love it because I still go out there every week for overnights and working. Um, oops, sorry. Is that I know, where, I know where there's three dens. You can see from, we well, can't see, but we can see where the den is. So. If there's snow, I'm tracking from the uh, from the um, from the ferry. This is all otter stuff. This is on Larry's Island, or La yeah, Larry's Island. Um, and this is a stump right here that they I've landed there and taken a look. But this is it's so much fun to see their belly slide, to see where they're active. And this right here, you know, Hopkins Point is that where the worst ever was? Um, I don't know. Anyway, this is a I put a camera. This is a, a latrine right along. I don't mean to keep on calling out Miles. Um, Anyway, this is at 5.30 in the afternoon, which means technically you could have seen that otter from the ferry when it was coming back in. I would love, I've only know two people who have seen otters from the ferry. I think that would be fun. Um, 
Field guides, um, what a library they have. You hear that sometimes. Oh, they have such a great library. If your books don't look like they've been used, it means your books are sitting on the shelf, and that's great. Um, read them at home, look up stuff, bring them with you. Um, you know, you see something you love, that's what somebody, oh, when you see something, you look at it, you go and read about it. Somebody, what, what was that family? Yeah, anyway, these are good. Paul Resendez, Tracking and the Art of Seeing is good. Stokes Nature Guide, don't always recommend Stokes, but I do like this one. This blue one is a tricky one, because I lost the cover, but it's one of those Peterson, Peterson, but it's not, yeah, Peterson Reference Guide, Behavior of North American Mammals. This is great, this, is, this has got really good information on it. Oh, we talked about puffins. We talked about that otters don't really have too many um, uh, predators. predators, but they are the only predator of adult snapping turtles. Really? Twice I found this, but they don't do it during the summer. In the wintertime, when the snapping turtles are asleep under the ice, the otters find them, pull them up on top of the ice. I found this in upstate New York near my uh, in-laws house wow. uh, on the ice. Um, wow. and, but in the marsh, we found just this pile of um, <laughs> snapping turtle shell pieces. We knew an otter had crunched through it. Um, this is another great one, Mark Elbrock. Wow, really turned it up. Um, He's done a lot of these field guides, really made, improved them. This is not, this is a sticker I stuck on there by accident. Um, Mammals in North America is a good one too. Um, my advice is to be ready. This is a peregrine falcon, this has nothing to do with otters, but on Reach Road where I lived on Vinyl Haven, I hopped on my bike, I was heading on out, and I got about 15 feet, and there was this peregrine eating a morning dove in the middle of the road. I had my camera right behind me, took some pictures, it was in my milk crate, um, put it back in, turned around, let the peregrine go. But I was ready, being ready is really good. Bring your tools, have your camera and books with, uh, with you. I prefer a tote bag so you can access it. Backpacks are fine, but then you have to take it off and pull stuff out. Um, but be ready, your camera should be charged. You should have your you know, memory stick in it or whatever. Um, and what I like to say is you wanna practice with your uh, with, with your uh, trail camera, because every trail camera is different, distance and whatnot, um, and lighting and angles. So this is me and that's my son, Leaf. This is a long time ago, 2011. Yeah. Um, practicing, he didn't really get it that day. He kind of was like, what are we doing? And then the next year he was waving uh -huh. to it, waving. Um, that's when the coyote showed up. Um, we're trying to get it there. Um, once again, the camera does make some noise. This is Rex. <laughs> Rex was the same one you can see. From the ferry potentially it clicked he looked over it he was not happy he took off so this was five you can set it for five pictures too um he looked over and he took off so there's four blank pictures but then again eventually got used to the sound or whatnot or maybe it was just because there was no wind that day. i don't know why but that was the one day with him so you're gonna have impact but we try to minimize it as much as possible you're gonna if you get these trail cameras oh look at this see this is that this is that latrine that the otter was sitting in all moss and grassy all over the place. She has totally torn up this hillside. But sometimes with your trail camera, you get to it and you look at it and it says, I've got 800 pictures. This is great. Fantastic. And 750 of them are some deer like looking at the oh, lens. Oh like, What's going on there? Um, so you're going to get all kinds of stuff. This is on Calderwood Island. This deer oh. kept on getting in the way. But it was cool because I watched the little horns grow, antlers, oh. whatever. There's a raccoon, I think, oh was my licking God. my camera. That's funny. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. And every now and then vandals show up. That's my kid. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was funny, coming back for that. Um, this was a brilliant idea of mine. I decided I was going to put the camera on otter level so I can get an otter's view, level view of them pooping or whatever. So I put it down low, and this one otter kind of took an interest and rubbed up against the lens and smeared it. Can you even, like, there's an oh, otter in there, you can't even see it. It's so great. You already know what they roll in. This thing rubbed up against my camera. Ew, and you can't ew. even see the squirrel. Oh, you can kind of see the squirrel, but it was just gross. So I decided not to do that anymore. <laughs> but it's always, you never know what you're going to find. This is that one classic den that I've shown, or a latrine that I've shown a couple times, all winter long. One female, always there. That's why I've tracked it all winter long. I did a vernal pool study there, put the camera up. I don't know, these three otters showed up. Like, I don't know where they were from, what's going on, but they went to the little tree to find out what's going on um, in the area. 
If you do find a camera, there's nothing worse than having your camera taken. Well, there's several things worse. But it stinks. I've had that happen. This person found my camera and decided to leave it there and gave me the peace sign. I thought that was pretty cool. That was not me. Um, anyway, also don't forget the snow fleas. Aren't the snow fleas are good? Um, and when you do track out there, you're always looking for like these beautiful spots. Once again, this was that first where it came out, slept underneath it, went back in. But you also get to go to these beautiful places and just make sure you take some time to, to look around. Safety first, look at that beard. Oh, um, it is hunting season. Orange is a good thing to wear um, out there. This is on Bald Island. This is the first place I got growled at. The den is over here. I actually thought I was away. Maybe, I don't know what was going on. I hopped up onto this rock. Something below me splashed. I didn't even know there was water below me. Splashed, and all of a sudden you're, and I rock hopped as fast as I could. Um, but <laughs> might not, you might want to think before you get too close to dens. You also don't want to get ahead of yourself. This is that spot at Mill River, or Mill Farm, with the matted down. This was last year. I monitor an easement there. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. I got down there, it was like, this is perfect. I didn't even think I took a step and I went right up to my hip in muck. I mean, I can't tell you when I weighed 24 pounds, but it's been a long time and that's the otter's way. So they can go over that, but maybe I can. Um, make sure you bring coffee or something with you, something warm in the wintertime when you go out there. Um, lots of people like to go with friends or a group because it's safer uh, or because of safety. And that's totally understandable. Ice is scary. Be careful on the ice. The most dangerous part getting on the ice on any of these marshes or whatever is the edge. Getting on and off. I mean, also below or above beaver dams tends to be um, thinner too, but along the edge is where you might break through. But even if you go by yourself or even if you go with a group, make sure you wander off. Find your own stuff every now and then. Um, I always find I learn better. I'm finding it. Um, and just accept that you're gonna be probably considered the weird guy in the woods or the creepy guy in the woods. I used to try to not appear to be that person, but now I've accepted it. Um, anyway, we're some of the luckiest people in the world simply because of where we live. And that's your otter show. This is at the marsh in St. George. This is the rock right um, at the back of our house. Our, yeah. That's Leaf and Amy. Did otters ever suffer the same fate as beavers of being hunted for their pelts? Yeah, in fact, that's why I mean, they used to be all over North okay. America. Yeah, they were hunted. Um, yeah, I don't have any stats or anything like that, but yeah, they were but over. But they're, they're, they're fur, I mean, it's not as thick or whatever. The sea otters have the thickest, you right. know, per whatever. There's probably pretty close. I mean, granted, the rolling and all that gross stuff. And but. so these guys will swim, you said, out to Vinyl Haven, so through the ocean, but they live in freshwater, correct? Well, they live in both. I mean, in, bo okay. in both. Um, and it's funny because Paul Resendez, I have friends who know him, he would not, he did not believe, this was just 10 years ago, that otters, mm -hmm. that river otters would go into salt water. To me, but why not? Like, they don't have gills, they don't need to breathe or right. anything. We used to watch in Alaska, you'd see where the seals would make it into these lakes where there was salmon. And folks would be like, how long can they stay there? They'd be like, until it freezes. I mean, they're not breathing right. it. Um, it might affect their skin. It isn't something with like manatees, like they love the fresh water, they have to get away from the salt water every now and then. So maybe it's probably not the best for their fur or whatever, but they have no problem going. And I'm gonna guess, it's probably not that often that there's an exchange with otters from Vinyl Haven and stuff going across, but they certainly go from island to island. Every island has got them on there, or at least a den nearby. Yeah. Um, I lived in California a couple of times, and uh, we saw the sea otters. Yes. And Were you like Monterey Bay or something? Monterey Bay, yeah, that's yeah. where I went. So I just wondered, I saw the mothers, and they had their little babies, and they were just floating in the water, and uh, of course it's warm there, so I just wondered. They have a lot more predators than these guys, uh -huh. but um, yeah, they will actually, what, they tie themselves up in yeah, the kelp so they, they don't do. float away. They kelp do. is probably the safest place for them to be. Sharks and whatnot don't like to go through the kelp. Same thing with orcas, but um, that's where, I mean, funny, moose can swim. One of main, moose's main predators are orcas while they're swimming. But I know a friend who saw a moose getting chased by an orca and the moose went over to this kelp 
So the orca bailed on it, but then the moose got caught up and the kelp and drowned it. So it was a drowned. Oh, that's sad. Wonderful story. Um, yeah, but I was just curious because that's why I came. I, I just love these sea otters. I went to Monterey Bay Aquarium three oh. years ago, and I got uh, like a 3D thing for my fridge with this sea otter sticking its little face out. Oh, they're great. And, and they they're, look nice. they're just so much fun to watch. They had that tank, and they kept on giving because, you know, they'll use rocks or whatever, and they give them rocks, and the otters kept on smashing the windows. Like, oh, really? They give them ice cubes or something like that. Um, yes, yeah, sea otters are great. I mean, they are 100% aquatic. They do not come yeah, to land they, they for anything. In the water. Yeah. But apparently with salmon numbers in certain areas, I don't think Monterey is a big is a problem, but probably a problem or what's going on there. But probably more, um, you know, British Columbia and Southeast Alaska, maybe even Homer. Um, the orcas are eating a, a lot of them. Oh, really? Like they're running out oh, of whatever so uh, else. So they've moved on to otters yet, which is tough. Also, there's something people were dumping. I mean, kitty litter has something in it that was affecting them okay. in Monterey Bay. Okay. That was a big thing. Don't flush your kitty otters? litter. Yeah, it was affecting really? otters. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I like cats though. They're cool. Oh. Anyway, does anybody have any questions or anything? Got cards over there with those. Uh, writing addresses on the back. Take, feel free to take a look at the books. This is the camera I use now, um, uh, the uh, trail camera. This is cool, this is called Youth, uh, the company's Youth Inc. And the only reason I got it is because it was cheap. It was a hundred bucks. This now, they took all those videos, all the video of the three sniffing and stuff. It, uh, it took me a while to realize how, to learn how far and stuff, um, but it takes three photos, no, three photos, you know, one, one second, two, one second, three, and then, a, a 10 second video. So if anything's hanging out, I, I have a spot in my backyard where I get a lot of coyotes and stuff, so I get some pretty good videos there. Mm -hmm. But anyway, thank you all for coming. Thank you. Nice to see you. Yeah. Thank you.